Hello and welcome to this video review of the R5 Direct Drive Racing Simulator Bundle from Moza. Now this is essentially a entry point into the sim racing space because while on my channel I've reviewed several Moza products and been very impressed, they've actually been quite high in price. So to actually have a bundle like this which gives you a direct drive servo and a wheel rim to actually hold and pedals for 599 US dollars seems a little too good to be true. Now, I am gonna give you my absolute honest opinion as I always do, but I must tell you that this particular video is a sponsored post because although Moza aren't giving me any money, they are letting me keep a direct drive wheel set up for use on my channel for making this video, which is very kind of them, but I'm still gonna tell you exactly what I think. So we're gonna unbox it on camera and then I'm gonna test it out with some games and I'm gonna tell you exactly what I think of it. So let's see, can 599 US dollars really give you the full direct drive racing simulator setup? Let's find out. So I've set up a camera up here so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Hello up there. The first thing that comes out of the box is the ES steering wheel, which I've not seen before. It's in a bag as you'd expect from these Moza products. Right, the first thing I notice is the spongier feel of, of the paddles because the other paddles were very noisy, if you remember. It was uh, click, click, click. And although these are micro switch, uh, they feel really nice, not as clunky. So that is good. Uh, it's got a uh, leather, leather surround. It's also got the rally style indicator up here so that you know where the center is and looks like the quick release system is there in full effect. So that's really cool as well. Quick release built in. Now I'm not picking up any sign that this is a reduced quality product for price. It doesn't have analog sticks. It's got a D-pad, which feels, what's that feel like? A bit like an Evercade pad, if you've ever tried one of those. Maybe like an old Sega pad, a Game Gear one. Although it only has the four directions, It'd be difficult to press the diagonals, but you're not gonna be throwing any fireballs with this, right? So there are 18 different face buttons on the wheel rim, which is good because there aren't any clutch paddles. So you're gonna need at least one button for the clutch if you want to pull away properly in Formula One. Um, and also big buttons for radio and start. Interestingly, radio is concave and start is convex, but uh, the radio button feels nice. They all feel nice. There's not too much travel on them, and although they don't feel like a controller, they feel pretty much like the old white and black buttons on an original Xbox controller. That's the best way I can describe it. You've got Moza Racing here on the front, and uh, this is where you'd be able to take it off with Allen keys if you had to, but there's no reason to. Little indicator here, that will be for LEDs, to show you when you need to change gear. Yeah, all looks good. Feels nice, decent size and uh, plenty of buttons, so good start. Next we have a power supply, PSU, and then another layer of packing. Ah, let's come to the servo next. So this is the Moza R5 direct drive wheelbase, providing 5.5 Nm of torque and it looks and feels so much like the R9 wheelbase that I reviewed on my channel. From the feel of it, it just feels exactly the same as the other one. It's nice and heavy, perhaps not as heavy, although I haven't got the other one to hand. And on the back, you've got pedal and dash and USB and DC input, like that. And you've also got power button, just like the other. Now, on the top here, you do have two little holes, screw holes. So that would be for the dashboard attachment to go on because I actually had an earlier version of the R9 wheelbase, which didn't have those. And so I was confused when it came to attach it because it came with screws, but there were no screw holes, but that's been fixed for this one. So again, there are no vents, but apparently while you're racing, um, it has temperature management. So presumably it will turn down the direct drive feedback, the force feedback, when it gets too hot so that it can cool down. But they say you shouldn't really notice it. It's, even if you're doing endurance races, you should be able to use this wheelbase. 
So that's looking good too. And next we've got the SRP light pedals, which are already put together, which is really useful because it does take a while to put these together. Of course, you've got the uh, accelerate and brake, accelerate and brake, and there's room in the middle for that extra pedal if you want to spend the extra money. So that's great that it's all set up because I should just be able to put it together and try it now. But these pedals, let's see. Yeah, they feel, oh yeah, the brake pedal does actually have more resistance, which is cool. So that's good. Yeah, they feel decent. You can take them off so that you can inverse mount them if you like. Uh, so you can have it hanging down more like a real car. But they've also got these non-slip pads here. So you've got non-slip pads so that you can put it on the floor because this being a entry point into sim racing, a lot of people who buy this won't have a full racing seat, you know, bucket seat um, or a frame set up. So this will just go on the floor. So I will test it on the floor. I've also got a racing seat myself and we'll see how it goes. In the white box, we have a desk clamp. So this is just like the one that I borrowed for the other setup. So I know that works very well, but I will set it up with this just to try the whole bundle. There's a bag with cables in it. We've got uh, USB, there's also a power cable, it's UK because I'm in the UK, and that is a large kettle plug. And there's also an Allen key and a little spanner in there, and another Allen key. So everything you need to fit everything together. I don't remember needing any of the little screws last time, but we'll see if we need them this time. And that's it. There's nothing else in the main box. There is, of course, one more clutch pedal in a separate box, but because that's not part of this actual bundle, I'm gonna set up the main bundle first, and then after I've tested it, I'll attach the clutch pedal so you can see what it's like with the whole setup. But for now, I'm very impressed. I can't actually see where the money has been saved because the wheelbase feels just as high quality and looks as high quality as well as the R9 wheelbase. And I've got to say that this steering wheel rim, although it's lacking clutch paddles, um, I, I, can't, I can't work out why it's all so much cheaper. So I'm going to be very interested to try it out. So let's do that now. Setting up the wheel, base and pedals is very straightforward with this bundle. The provided desk clamp actually seems to be improved over the one that Moser offered previously and attached to my unit nicely using four provided screws and an Allen key. The wheel takes a bit of close scrutiny to work out which way up it should go to attach it to the quick release mechanism, but it's obvious when it's done correctly and then it's all lovely and sturdy. As for the pedals, well, with the out-of-the-box configuration of the two pedals, you can just about reach the cable from the gas pedal to the brake pedal, though the cable is only just long enough to allow this. It feels weird to have the pedals quite so far apart anyway, so I used another provided Allen key to move the brake pedal into the centre of the pedal board. It's really easy to do this, and you can even do most of the screw work by hand before tightening it with the Allen key. The whole setup took me between 15 and 20 minutes, even with this pedal adjustment, which isn't at all bad for a serious sim racing rig. Interestingly, the pedals connect to the wheelbase this time using the supplied Ethernet cable rather than a separate USB connection like with the SRP pedals that I reviewed on my channel previously. That's a definite plus point and keeps the connections neat and tidy. Once everything's assembled, it's time to download the Moser Pit House app, which is available for free from Moser's website. I was given beta software for this review, which should be public by the time you see this, but it looks very familiar anyway for anyone who's used the Moser Pit House app before. The app has buttons to activate the various new segments of your racing rig, and it does this in mere seconds. After that, it's very easy to calibrate the various inputs. You simply hold the steering wheel in the centered position and then hit center on the app's dashboard. Et voila! The wheel now appears correctly and visibly matches your inputs, which is really cool because you can instantly see if it's working correctly, which here it is. Also in the app, you can choose how many rotations of the wheel you want to go through as you go from lock to lock. The default 720 degrees of rotation is plenty for most racing games, though you'll need higher if you're into something like trucking sims, which I'm not. And there's also a 360 degree option there on the dash for when you want to play F1. Now to calibrate the pedals. 
These are also easy to calibrate, though required one extra step compared to the SRP pedals that I reviewed previously. Namely, I had to go through to the More screen and then hit Calibrate there. This gives you 10 seconds in which to fully depress and release each pedal, which you can do one at a time if you so wish. Having registered the minimum and maximum values, you're then left with a smooth representation of your progressive inputs on the screen. The Moza Pit House app goes further, offering several preset curved input maps that can also be user defined. This allows you to set certain stages of pedal depression to be more or less sensitive. This is actually very useful with these SRP light pedals as there's no barrier behind the brake pedal, so you might want to only engage full locked brakes with that final percent or two of the curve. Similarly, with acceleration, I find I like to have more sensitivity in the mid-range so I can feed in the power, making it less easy to fully or near fully open the throttle, which avoids wheel spin on the exit of corners. This is then mapped for use in games, and compatible games on your hard drive can then be launched directly from the Moza Pithouse app, though not before you've hit the config button to set up the unit for the game in question. Assetto Corsa is my usual go-to game for any sim racing test, and once you've loaded a game, you'll need to map the controls as I'm doing here. This being a brand new product, this actual unit is not listed in the presets at the time of review, but I found that it worked absolutely perfectly all the same. I wasn't able to assign the clutch to a button, sadly, presumably because Assetto Corsa's physical simulation requires a progressive clutch input to work, but an extra clutch pedal is available for $39.99 US dollars, which isn't too steep. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be attaching that later, because Moza has sent me one to try, but for now, I'm going to stick with the out-of-the-box setup, which works an absolute treat with Assetto Corsa, as I started changing gears using the paddle shift. The shifters are really, really nice to use, and the clicking is definitely quieter compared to the GS steering wheel and the CS steering wheel, and that deliberately spongier feel is more comfortable under your fingers. The size of the wheel rim is smaller than that of the CS wheel, but it feels nice and racy, and the ergonomic moulding of the rim makes it very comfortable to hold, combined with the leather finish of course, and switching hand positions to pull your car into sweeping corners feels great. The LEDs are in a good position to be seen out of the periphery of your vision, and they help for gear shift timing, though they're a little dim compared to other wheels. The 5.5 newton meters of force feedback strength is stronger than I expected and feels exactly like the pricier R9 in use, albeit with only just over half of that unit's 9 newton meters of torque. I don't often turn the force feedback up to full on units like this anyway, so having this one working to its fullest potential just feels arguably like a real car, though it is admittedly less likely to hurt your thumbs in a virtual crash. The fidelity of the force feedback effects is gorgeous, however, and that same feeling of quality shines through. It's immediately a joy to use, right from lap one. With such an impressive approximation of the higher tier direct drive wheelbase, and such a pleasant and enjoyable wheel to use, the bundle's lower budget price was always going to need a compromise somewhere, and the biggest compromise is arguably in the pedals. The SRP light pedals that are included here are not actually light, as the name might suggest, as in lightweight, because they're rugged and strong, but rather their feature set is light compared to their bigger sibling, the standard SRP pedal set. I like the wide feel of the light pedals themselves, and the resistance of the gas pedal is really good, allowing for subtle changes of throttle position. But the brake pedal is more workmanlike, it's simply a linear pedal sprung from behind. Having come from the load cell in the SRP pedals that I reviewed on my channel a few weeks ago, the lack of any real barrier to push against as you brake is definitely missing. Without that feedback telling your foot when you're about to lock the brakes, braking zones come with a small degree of uncertainty. Again, calibration helps with this, and you need to learn the feel of the brakes of any new car anyway, so a bit of practice makes this much easier. And of course, if you're just starting out with more serious sim racing, and you've come from the usual plasticky pedals of lesser sets, you'll be very pleased with the industrial feel of these solid metal pedals, especially if you mount them to some kind of frame. If you don't have a frame, however, I must say I'm also very impressed with the non-slip pads on the bottom, which have done a great job of holding the unit in place on my wooden floor. Indeed, with these pads and the desk clamp, you don't even need a racing seat to enjoy this, 
just a desk with sufficient foot room would be perfect with a standard computer monitor. I do most of my gaming on console on a 55 inch TV that's mounted to the wall, but here I'm using a rather basic laptop setup which may look unimpressive in terms of a rate my setup reddit post, but I was well into the game using this wheel rig. I had just as much fun as I did with the more expensive versions of the included products, and if anything my driving seemed better. I was also able to catch some pretty big slides, which I would normally have lost. So in terms of actually acting as a controller for your virtual car, this bundle is right up there. It's really good. So before we attach that separate clutch pedal, let's just give a quick rundown of the standout pros and cons of the standard bundle. We'll start with the few cons, which are more about what it doesn't have than the quality of what it does have. The steering wheel doesn't have analogue sticks, making looking around harder to do in the game, though not impossible if you map the look controls to the D-pad. It's also lacking those clutch paddles, though that's perhaps more of an advanced aspect of sim racing than this bundle's target audience will be ready to deal with, so that's not a biggie at all. The LEDs, as I say, aren't the brightest I've ever seen, and the linear brake pedal feels less realistic than others, though still provides a solid and detailed response to your inputs. As with most racing wheels, compatibility between games does vary, including lacking LED feedback in R Factor 2 from my test, and requiring button mapping in most instances, though it is easy to configure and save your setup in games like F122. Finally, it's not compatible with consoles, only PC, which is something that I hope Moza will consider changing in the future. But for now, that's the same with all of Moza's range, they're just PC wheels, so it's no surprise here. The pros list, however, does outweigh these few shortcomings, in my opinion. The 5.5 newton meters of torque in the force feedback motor is plenty. It doesn't feel light at all. And the fact that you get a direct drive motor at this price, with everything else that's included, is frankly amazing. Driving around Monaco with the force feedback turned right up is properly bumpy and exciting. It does feel like steering a real car, and clattering over curbs at Monza feels incredible with this wheel bundle. It's really violent. The good-looking rim is comfortable to hold, and everything about the elements connected to your hands feels premium in terms of build quality and feel. The gear shift paddles are the best I've tried on a Moza wheel rim, and there are 18 face buttons, which is loads, so you can tinker with your car's settings on the fly. It's also really quick to get set up and racing. Moza has definitely got the user experience in mind in terms of setup. Everything works beautifully in terms of calibration in the Moza Pit House app, and you could spend hours tinkering or just use the presets to get up and racing in a really short space of time. In terms of wow factor, anyone you show this off to is going to be mighty impressed. They'll never know it was only 599 US dollars. I mean, I keep looking at the price myself, wondering how it's so cheap, considering I actually like this wheel rim far more than the CS wheel, which itself is almost half the price of this entire bundle. This is truly a great deal if you have the suitable budget. Now, as this is a sponsored post, I'm not going to give this review an actual score, as that would be wrong. But in terms of what my 30 years of racing game experience tells me, this is honestly an absolutely fantastic entry point into direct drive powered sim racing. The bundle gives you an astonishingly high quality experience that can make you feel like you're really driving a supercar around a world famous racetrack, even though you're sitting at home in front of a laptop. So yes, I absolutely recommend this bundle, with the proviso that a pedal upgrade will probably be the next thing on your wish list. But that's fine. Every sim racer has a wish list of things that they want next. And if you're looking to get into sim racing and have a mid-range budget, then this bundle should go straight to the top of yours. And I mean that absolutely sincerely. I really like this set. And so we come at last to that additional clutch pedal add-on. It's easy to add to the set, and you can have it nearer the brake if you wish, though I opted for a straight equidistant layout. There's another small ethernet cable underneath this one that connects to the gas pedal, and then you just need to calibrate it in the Moza Pit House app, and you're good to go. The pedal itself, while linear in its resistance like the brake pedal, is sturdily built, comfortable under your foot, and offers high fidelity progressive application and release. It has noticeably less resistance than the brake pedal next to it, which is a nice touch. 
Of course, without a stick shift peripheral, the clutch is always going to feel strange when used with paddle shifters, because it's just not realistic to use them together. Paddle shifters are synonymous with semi-automatic gearboxes, where you just pull the lever and the car does the rest for you. So while you can use the clutch with manual gears like this, it's better to use it for standing starts, controlling wheel spin and holding back some of your engine's horsepower while keeping the revs high, and that's something you just can't do without a clutch pedal. It is, however, not essential for most racing gameplay, and if you're really serious about realistic car control, you'd probably already be looking at Moser's more expensive products anyway. This is an upper-tier, entry-level bundle, and so I can see why Moser has decided to leave the clutch pedal as an optional extra to keep the cost down. Personally, I don't feel I need it because I would play F1 in my own time, but for US dollars it's a fine addition to an already very impressive set. Well, that's all for this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. I'd like to thank Moza for their help and for supporting my channel. It's very much appreciated. Please do check out my reviews of some more Moza products on the playlist link up there. And also please do check out my channel for more tech and gaming reviews, music and more. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Cheers.